edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I've just been sent this puzzle uh, by Mark to have a go at. Apparently this has been recommended a few times. It's a new puzzle by a new author to me by the name of Nahelian. Um, and I just called Mark immediately and said, I think you've missed out a clue or two in this because this can't possibly have a unique solution. Mark says it does have a unique solution, which is incredibly surprising. Um, I mean, those of you who've been following the channel for any amount of time will be familiar with the likely rules of this puzzle. And I'm looking at it thinking there just is not enough information, but I'm assured there is. So we will have a look at this in a second. I'll read you those rules in just a moment. Um, my first job today, though, is to say a very happy birthday to a young eight year old girl by the name of Zoe Chance. Zoe, I think you're in California at the moment, and I understand you've been following the channel for a little while with your mum. And this is just, I mean, this is fantastic news for us. The thought that there are such young people with the skills to follow these videos is startling and wonderful. Um, so I wanted to wish you a very happy birthday. I hope you have a super day and I hope you enjoyed this video in particular. Um, anyway, that's one thing I wanted to do. Next thing I want to do is to let you know that our 400,000 subscriber bonus video has been released. We released it this morning. Um, it's about an hour of Mark and I chatting through questions that have been sent in by the community. We had a lot of fun. Some of the questions were absolutely brilliant. Um, and um, yeah, we hope you enjoy that. Anyway, it's up on the channel right now. Uh, what else to mention? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is Tuesday night. That's right. So at 10 o'clock UK time, Mark and I are going to be recommencing our battle with the game Baba Is You. Um, so do join us for that if you uh, if you enjoy. Well, hopefully, whether or not you enjoyed the first stream, um, we, we, we're going to endeavour to make sure there are no technolo technology issues um, uh, tomorrow evening. We're going to do a practice stream before then. So, yeah, 10 o'clock tomorrow night should be good to go. And then the final thing to mention is our Patreon reward for October, um, where we've only had a very few uh, number of correct entries so far. So this does suggest that if you want to win the, the free Bubba is you key, you should definitely persevere because I think you'll be in with a reasonable chance. Um, and uh, the feedback we've had from those people who have solved it are that the, the whole pack is just incredible. And that uh, confirms my own experience of it. There are so many brilliant puzzles um, and we have an absolute treat as well later in the month um, for patrons because a number of the puzzles are going to have solution videos created by those setters. So there's going to be a lot of solution videos. And as I say, they're going to be many of them are going to be created by the people who actually set the puzzles. And if I read out the names of some of the people who set the puzzles, you will know why this is exciting. Um, people like uh, Riff Clown, people like Tall Cat, um, Zeta Math, Grockles, uh, JD, uh, Maverick JD. Um, I'm going to miss people out now. But, you know, basically it's a whole load of very brilliant setters. Um, now, let's get on with this one. It's called Magical Rose. Um, don't really know why. I suppose, does it look a little bit like a flower or a rose? One of those things you put on the end of your watering can? It might do. Um, the rules are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits cannot repeat on each main diagonal marked in blue. So that's normal sort of diagonal Sudoku rules. So those cells there have to be the digits one to nine once each. The same, of course, on the negative diagonal. Why is it called a negative diagonal? It's because if you were plotting a sort of normal line, uh, X versus Y, this would have a negative gradient. I only learned that just the other day. Um, digits along arrows sum to the digit in that arrow circle. So let's look at this arrow here. That means we sum these three digits. Let's make them one, two, and three. One plus two plus three is six. So we would put six in the circle. That's how arrows work. And the only, um, the only other rule is clues outside the grid give the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal. And digits may repeat along such a diagonal if allowed by the other rules. So these eight cells on this 35 diagonal have to sum to 35 and we absolutely could repeat digits. So if we had a three there, we could have a three there, a three there. We could have loads and loads of threes 
and that would make the total. Oh no, it wouldn't make it impossible. I've still got three cells left to get up to a total of 20, and that's very achievable. So uh, yeah, just so long as you don't break the rules of Sudoku or diagonal Sudoku or arrow Sudoku, you're good to go with these diagonals and repeating digits. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, the first thing I see when I see this puzzle is that these four circle digits are all different digits. How do we know this? Well, this is a, something that comes up quite a lot if you get this diagonal constraint. So obviously this cell here, let's look at this one. This can't be the same as this digit because it's in the same column. And it can't be the same as this digit because it's in the same row. But of course, it also can't be the same as this digit because it's on the same diagonal. So each of these, that logic applies symmetrically, obviously, to all four of these circles. So these are all different digits. Um, and I'm wondering, I feel like they're going to be six, seven, eight, and nine somehow. I just want to try and work out why that feeling is correct, if indeed it is. I mean, this arrow here is three cells. So if I put the minimum into these three cells, I'm going to get six because I'm going to get one plus two plus three. So we know that this circle and indeed this circle are at least equal to six. We don't quite know the same, though, about the two cell arrows, I don't think. Oh. Oh, yes, we do. Actually, we do. And that is because let us look not necessarily at the circles or even at the arrows individually but let's look at the arrows collectively that occur in row one there are in fact five arrow cells in row one so the minimum i could make these five arrow cells add up to would be one plus two plus three plus four plus five the triangular number for five is 15 so these five cells add up to at least 15 and therefore these circles add up to at least 15 and therefore in both cases i can see you're going to have to have six, seven, eight, and nine into these circles because obviously the logic's the same in row nine and you can't use any digits less than six uh, to add up to 15 in two cells. You'd have to have a five and a 10 and that's so ridiculous, I can't believe it. Um, now, oh, well, okay. Uh, yeah. We can go further with this. This is clever, actually. This is very clever. Because now, because these are all different, we know they add up to 30, because there are 6, a 7, an 8, and a 9 in some order. So these outline cells now, with the blue outlines, add up to 30. But what's the minimum we can make these arrows add up to? Well, we've just worked that out. The minimum I can make that string add up to is 15. The minimum I can make that string add up to is 15. 15 and 15, here is a knowledge bomb from Cracking the Cryptic, is 30. So these must in fact be 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And that, that's very interesting. I'm just going to, before I carry on with Sudoku, I'm just going to check these diagonals actually, because I've not even given them a second thought yet. Um, I've got eight cells on this one. In fact, none of the digits I've just identified overlap at all, do they? Um, 35 divided by eight uh, is a little bit over four. So actually these are quite average, which is a bit disappointing. And, ah, oh, that's interesting. The 26 diagonal is also, you know, it's five cells long. So it's averaging very close to five, which is the average digit you'll see in any Sudoku puzzle, or at least this Sudoku puzzle. Um, so in fact, that's even more surprising. These these two clues here, the 35 and the 26, really aren't revealing very much. So I think probably we have to stay doing what we're doing with the arrows. Uh, I'm almost, ah, in fact, yes. I'm actually thinking of coloring. I know I need no excuse to color, but the reason I'm thinking of coloring here is that it feels to me like this grid is going to get divided between 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s and 5s, i.e. cells that have that quality, the quality of being a 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, and cells that have a quality of being a high digit, a 6, 7, 8 or 9. And I can see that because if we look at these cells, for example, these are all high digits. The same is true in row 1. And now look at column 2. 
those dominoes are going to be high digits, which is going to force all these to be low digits. So this is certainly something that might, you know, rather than filling in each cell with one, two, three, four, and five, which at least to me gets very cluttered. Um, I'll use, I don't know what I meant to use for low digits. I'm going to use orange and I'll use blue for high digits. So by Sudoku, these are all high because they're not low by Sudoku. These are all high because they're not low. Now in this column, we've got four high digits. So the remaining digits must be the low digits. Same is true in column eight. Um, oh. <laughs> that, that, uh, oh no, I was going to say that ran out of steam fairly quickly, but it didn't. I've just noticed on the diagonals, I've got the same thing going on. So those squares there have got to be low because there's four high digits. On the positive diagonal, same is true almost by symmetry on the negative diagonal. Oh, so now in the middle box, I've got five low digits. So the other digits are all blue. This is lovely so far, isn't it? It's absolutely lovely. Now, oh, oh I wondered if we were going to get like a preponderance of high or low digits on one of these diagonals. We've got a few low digits on this one, but not enough. If we, if we got another low digit, that would be interesting because then we'd have four low digits. So four digits on this diagonal that couldn't be greater than five. So the other digit would have to be greater than five because four times five is only 20. Uh, hang on a sec. Let me just think about this. Um, now almost interested in oh it is <laughs> it is it's Fistemafel isn't it well at least I can see Fistemafel is very interesting here there might be a simpler way of doing this than using the Fistemafel ring let me just let me stare at this for a second and see if I can see an easier way um No, I mean, and I really, really want to use Fistemafel as well, because Fistemafel is going to allow me to do some magic in these corners and a magic in the rings. Right, we're going to do Fistemafel, and this is going to adulterate my colouring. Oh, no, I'm going to have to make a new, I'm going to have to make a new grid. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to make a new grid. I'm going to duplicate my grid. Hopefully this will work. And now I'm going to erase this, this grid completely. Right, and now we're going to talk about Fistemafel. In fact, shall I also, in fact, I'm going to also erase all of the numbers. We're going to have a totally clean Fistemafel proof. And I'm going to try and remember the, le the, the last form of the proof that someone showed me, which I really liked. Um, I used it in a video the other day because I thought it was incredibly elegant. Right, it was something like the following. What I'm going to do, by the way, so for those of you who don't know, is I'm going to prove that these, this ring of digits here, this 16 cell ring, is, contains the identical set of digits to those 16 two by twos in the corner of a Sudoku. It is an amazing thing when you first appreciate that this is true. It's true of any normal Sudoku. These blue cells, if we filled them in with digits, we would find those exact 16 digits appeared in the orange cells. Um, so that's that's the objective. That's what we're going to try and prove. And we're going to do it by using uh, some trickery. So the first question we're going to ask is, can we describe these five columns of the Sudoku? What, what if we correctly completed this puzzle, what would we find in these highlighted cells? And the answer is five sets of the digits one to nine because obviously this column will contain one set of the digits one to nine, it will contain the digits one to nine once each. The same is true of this column, the same is true of that column, etc. So these cells, we don't know how 
the digits will be disposed within these blue cells, but we do know that overall this will be five sets of the digits one to nine. Now, if I remove the central box from that, that's obviously one set of the digits one to nine because this box will contain the digits one to nine once each. These cells, now the blue cells that are highlighted, are four sets of the digits one to nine. Now, now I want to highlight four rows of the Sudoku in a different color. So how would we describe the orange cells that I've just highlighted? Well, this row is one set of the digits one to nine. This row is a second set of the digits one to nine, etc. So we, the orange cells are four sets of the digits one to nine. But we said a few moments ago that the blue cells were four cells of sets of the digits one to nine. So at this point, the orange cells and the blue cells that we've highlighted are the same set of digits. Now, let's imagine this cell was a two. If I remove this, it's, you can see it's colored both blue and orange. So from my collection of blue cells, if I removed a sing this two here, and I removed it from the orange set of digits as well, it would still clearly be true to say that after deleting this digit from both sets, the digits are still, the digits in orange and blue are still the same because I've just removed the exact same digit from both sets. And I can perform that operation on any cell that has two colors in it. QED. The orange cells and the blue cells are the same set of digits. Now, why am I excited about this in the context of the actual puzzle? Well, let's look at this. In the blue, the two by twos in the corner, I've got three blue cells in each two by two. So I need to put 12 blue cells in the Fistimafel ring. Well, there are only 12 cells that we still haven't allocated a color to, so they all have to be blue. And similarly, in the Fistimafel ring now, the corner cells of the Fistimafel ring named after the constructor Fistimafel, of course, this theory, because he was the first one who sort of introduced it into a puzzle. These four cells are low, so there need to be low digits. There need to be four low digits in the two by twos in the corner. And you can see that we, therefore, those cells there have got to be orange. Isn't that beautiful? So suddenly our coloring becomes much more potent. Yes. Yes, it does. And now look at column five. I've got four high digits in there, so I can get rid of, add, add the low digits. Row five by symmetry is going to be similar, presumably. Um, right, now, now it might be, oh, it would be lovely now if I can use these little killer clues. Let me just take us, uh, oh, actually, Actually, I have got, if you look along the 35 diagonal, I have got five blue cells. That's five digits that are six or higher. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, this is forced. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's look at this diagonal actually in earnest because I think we have an issue here. Certainly, let's minimize these blue cells. Maverick's taken off. That's no surprise there. So this could be a six, that could be a six, that could be a six, and these two would have to be a six and a seven. They're in the same box of the Sudoku. So the absolute minimum for these um, outlined blue cells now is four sixes and a seven, which is 31, which would require those three squares there to add up to four. Well, I can't make these cells add up to less than four because these two are in the same box. So I can make these two a one and a two and make this a one. And then I have to put six in every other cell along the diagonal. That has to be a six or a seven. And that should equal 35 and be the only possible way that we can make this diagonal add up to this little. So let's just double check the maths again. 31, 32 and three more is 35. And of course, one is a low digit. And look. Look at this, two, three. Oh, I was thought it was going to do row eight. I can see it gives me a blue square here in box seven. Oh, and this is nice. 
Okay, so now let's have a look at box four. These two squares, we don't know what they are, but we know one of them is blue. And if one of them is blue, that's going to be our fourth blue digit in this column. So that square can't be a fifth blue digit. There are only four high numbers, six, seven, eight, and nine. That gives us this digit, which gives us this digit. One of those must be blue, same logic. So this must be orange, this must be blue. This is just fabulous, isn't it? Now there's one blue in one of those. So this must be orange, this must be blue. Oh, that's okay. So we, oh, maybe it's this diagonal that we'll resolve finally. I don't know whether we should be doing Sudoku now either, or I should carry on coloring. I'm gonna carry on coloring. Um, Yes, I am carrying on culling because these they're, they're four, four low digits. This is what we noticed before. If all of those cells were fives, which isn't actually possible anyway, because these two are in the same box, they would still only add up to 20. And therefore this square would have to be blue. So, it, so it's definitely blue, which means this square is definitely orange, which means this square needs to be blue. It needs to be a fourth blue in the column and that's gonna be orange. Um, what have I missed about these cells then? Don't know. I haven't got a little killer clue to help me color those in. Oh, so now we might have to do Sudoku. <laughs> um, that square's got to be a one or a two. Sorry, not it's not a one or a two because of the one or two players. So in fact, those three squares are a three, four, five, triple, which is quite interesting for these two low digits down here. Look, we've got a one, two pair. Oh. Now, hang on, Simon, make sure you use the diagonal because I'm just thinking here, the one on, on the positive diagonal, where do we put the one? It's not in, in the corner boxes. So there's a one in one of those three cells. Uh, OK, that might not be helpful. <laughs> um, 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 now what? Oh, can I just no, I can't. I was just wondering if I could now use the now use the um, these these four cells somehow. I've got to be a bit careful about this because we know that because these are adding up to fifteen, these two cells have got to add up to fifteen. So this is either a six, nine pair or a seven, eight pair. And the same is of course true here. So as the six is on the right hand side, the nine must be on the left hand side. We don't know what the order is, but we know one of these two squares must be a nine. So neither of these is a nine. The six is in, oh, in fact, yes. In fact, by Sudoku, why don't I do things easily? I never do, do I? But this square is a six by Sudoku because it's blue and it's the only place a six can go in the box so that so this does become a nine now these two have got to be a seven eight pair um six is going to be in one of those two squares yes this is good now we can use the diagonal again the six is off the diagonal the positive diagonal in the middle box it's off the positive diagonal in box seven so the six is on the positive diagonal in box three, and that places it. That places six in box one. Oh, and this resolves the final coloring because where does the six go in box four? It has to go here. And therefore it, it, that is blue. This is orange, this is orange, and this is blue. What a, this is just, it's magnificent is what it is. This is six now, this is seven by, that's a six by Sudoku. We've we done all the sixes. Yes, we have. Um, we have done all of the sixes. Nine has to be in one of those two squares. Nine has to be in one of these two squares. And we should tidy up ones perhaps. In fact, probably what we need to do quite carefully here is to make sure that we pencil mark everything where, where we have a meaningful restriction. Um, what about, ah, yeah, where does nine go in box one? It has to go right on the diagonal there, giving us a seven, eight pair as well. Now we can place nine in box three. It's got to go here. Now we can place nine in box nine. 
can't perhaps place it in box six, but we can place it in box two by Sudoku. We can place it in box eight by Sudoku. We can now place it in box five and box six by Sudoku and box four. And have we done all the nines? Yes, we have. So this is an eight. That's a seven. This is a seven. This is an eight. Now this eight on that diagonal, see seven and eight. Uh, that's an eight, that's a seven. Just again, I'm just tidying up Sudoku things here. Eight, seven, seven, eight. Um, this is a seven, that's an eight. This is an eight. No, oh no, we haven't quite done it. We have now. Um, they think it's all over. It is now. Um, that is all of the high digits suddenly in a flurry placed. Now, is this helpful? That's the next question. Uh, well, maybe it is. This six here has got a one or a two in its first position. So that square has got to be a four or a five. The nine has definitely got a three on it, therefore. Um, um, <laughs> I'm trying to see if that means something. I don't know if it does. I'm going to pencil mark it. Whoa, I think I just put the wrong thing in there. I didn't mean to do that. I think I've added a six to those digits. Um, I know there's a three in one of these cells. There's an eight up here. So there's a one in one of these two squares because this is a three cell eight arrow. So it's either one, three, four or one, two, five. And you can see this square can't be a one. So one of those two squares is a one. This square is not a one. Oh, now I wonder if I can use this 26 now. Just trying to, oh no, I know what I can do, much more straightforwardly. This one here must go in one of those two squares in box eight. That fixes, this is a two, this is a one. So now we can remove two as an option from the nine arrow. In fact, the nine arrow, in fact, the six arrow is done. That's a four. So we can remove four and we should be left with one, three, five, which do indeed add up to nine. So that's a good thing. We can get rid of four up there. We know that these two squares have got to be a two. Oh, hang on, have I made a mistake? No, oh, I see, no, it's, it's a two and whatever this digit is. So there's definitely a two in one of those squares, definitely a two in one of these squares. I was just wondering if we can also, the other thing we need to think about here is this diagonal, which needs to have needs to have two, three, four, and five on it somehow. I was just looking at this two and wondering whether I could force this two on, into somewhere on this diagonal usefully, but I'm not sure I can. Um, bobbins, right, okay. Um, let us instead then look at maybe this diagonal. We have got a nine on here now. So these four squares have got to add up to 17. Oh, and they're all low digits. Right, right. well, that, that's useful. That gives me this digit because I can't put one on this diagonal now, because if I do, that would be telling me these three digits, which are all low. So they're all, we're selecting for each of these digits from the digits one, two, three, four, or five, and they would have to add up to 16. Well, even if I could make them all five, they wouldn't add up that high. So this is not a one, and this is a one. Therefore, this is not a one. Oh, this is not a one, that central digit because of this. So we get a one here, which gives us a one here, and we might be off and running again now. Or is that, is that, Oh, no, maybe we're not. Hang on. Um, oh, I got excited then, but I think it was premature. Uh, we think we've got to carry on thinking. Let's come back to this then. Can that actually be a two? Um, if that's a two, these have to be three fives, and that's impossible because these are in the same box of the Sudoku, so that can't be a two. So now there is a two on the seven arrow, so the seven arrow is now known. It's a two five arrow, which means that these are a one, three, four, triple to add up to eight, 
two five here. It's probably resolved by something, but I can't see what it is. Two three four. Um, no, still still struggling. Okay, so what do we know about what do we know about these two digits then? So they have got to include. They can't include a one. They can't include a two. So they're definitely from three, four, or five. I'm not sure they can include a three. If we put three, five in here, three, five, five would be the best we do, which is 15. Oh, and then that could be a four. Yeah, okay, so that's possible. What about if there's no five in here? Then these would add up to seven, 12. No, that's not enough. So there's definitely a five in one of those two positions. What, oh, one in this box has to be exactly there now. Oh, that's nice. That gives me a one and a two here. So one is in one of those positions. Two is very restricted in box one. Two is off the diagonal as well. And that's good, maybe. So two is now on the diagonal, on the negative diagonal. It's in one of these three positions. And I'm hoping that does something. I'm not sure it does. Do we? If I could eliminate a two from here, I would know the central digit was a two, which would be very nice indeed. This square is a three, four, or a five. Ah, so I can now ask where two goes in this box. That's got to go here. Which means this square is not a two. Um... We're sort of iterating slowly towards a solution, but it's still not exactly giving up everything it knows, is it, this puzzle? We're still having to be a bit careful. Uh, so that's a three. These have to add up to 14, so they'd be double five, four. That would be a five. That's probably possible, actually. Um... This square here has got to be a three, four or five because we know the two is on this diagonal. Neither of these squares can be a four because they see a four in the column. That places two as a sort of hidden single in column six. So this square is a three or a five. These two squares are now a two, four pair. This square now is a three or a five to complete the negative diagonals quota of low digits. Um, Ah, now I've got a 3-5 pair in column 3. So this square's a 2, that square's a 5, that square's a 5, that square's a 3, that square's a 5. And are we off and going again? We might be, you know. This is a 2 or a 4. Um, and... And this 5 is giving me a 3 up here. That means this square is now... Oh, that square's gone up in value, but that's probably expected. Um, and in fact, look, where can we put 2 in box 7? It's got to go here. That's got to be a 4. That's got to be a 4. We've got a 3-5 pair over here and some more pencil marks we can tidy up. We know that's not a 5 because the 5 is in one of those two on the 26 diagonal. And that's not a 2 anymore. So this three is seeing this square on the diagonal. That gets us five and three. Oh, this four is seeing the two and the four. And therefore this square is a five. On the, so this, I think this 26 diagonal is gonna be where the magic finally gets revealed. That square's a two. This is a three or a four. Don't know if we can do that, but that's useful because it places a five over here. These two are a one, four pair now. This square's a naked single, sees three and four in the row, so that's a five. That's a three, that's a four, that's a three, that's a five. Now, let's check this diagonal. We have got a 13, 22, we need a four into this square. That finish, ah, that finishes, that's interesting, just go back there. That would otherwise be a deadly pattern of threes and fours, where there would have been two solutions to the puzzle. So this square here is very important, four, four, three, three. Um, 
this is a oh this is a one two pair which is resolved by the two here so all of those squares go in with that's now a three that's a four that's a five and if i haven't made a mistake that's a three and that is a heck of a beautiful puzzle and it did solve and i got to color and there was a lot of lovely logic what a perfect puzzle Nahelion, take a bow that really is clever stuff i'm amazed i am actually amazed that this has such a a sort of fun and pure unique solution as well often when you get these very minimal puzzles if they do solve they solve with a lot of you know a lot of aggressive bifurcation rather than sort of having beautiful logic throughout but this was really really lovely i loved the fact that there was sort of a, a touch of fistimafel in the middle to get to complete the coloring i don't know if that was necessary or not it may not have been you will have to tell me but i did enjoy that mightily I hope you did too. Let me know in the comments. I do read them and I do enjoy them, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Mm -hmm.